Studneck Aquatics here. I haven't used my boat for a number of years now, and I spent yesterday cleaning it up. Um, I cleaned out the inside, cleaned out the carpet. Um, it's, it's a little worn. And then these here are compartments that you store stuff in. And I'm making new tops for those, and that's what this video is, is showing how to make those with the indoor-outdoor carpet. <coughs> I'm also going to get new seats because these things are weather checked real bad. I have bought a new cover. I built some supports to put here to keep the cover from sagging. Um, I'm probably gonna have to get new tires because these are gonna be weather checked and they might go. I'm gonna get a new depth finder. Um, it burned up in the fire when I lost my house along with everything else. So slowly getting this thing back to into shape and um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and and add a little more to this because I'm going to be downstairs. I need to get some U-bolts to put this tire on the front here so that it is out of the way and it's not up in there. It's, it's not a huge boat. It's 16 foot. Um, it's set up for fishing. Works very, very well. So I will add more to this when we get down in the shop. Okay, these are the compartment lids that I made a long time ago, quite a few years ago. Um, basically, the way they sit is Get that one out of the way. The way they sit is like that. That covers the compartment. I know you can see the hinges. Um, I could put them under the carpet, but I'm not going to. It's not that big a deal. But as you see, the, the plywood is shot, everything is. And then this side here is screwed down to the metal, and so is that one. And then both of these middle ones open up. And last time I used a lot more fabric. I overlapped, and I'm doing it a little different this time. So. Anyway, um, so basically what I need is I bought some three-quarter inch plywood, uh, marine grade carpet, or marine grade plywood, and these I believe were 13 inches this direction by 10, and these are 13 by 12. So I need four of each. So that's what I did. Um, I have cut, these are the 13 by 12s. There's four of them total. And... These are the ones that I already have done. They're turning out really nice. They're going to look new. I didn't go with a with a uh, blue indoor outdoor marine grade because there's no way I'll match match the blue in the boat. It's there's so many different shades of blue. So I went with gray. And then I think that also those runners that are on the side of the boat that keep the boat on the trailer correctly, I believe I'll do that out of the same color. And then when I rebuy my seats, when I buy new seats, I'm gonna get something that has some gray in them. So it should all, all kind of go together. So basically what I'm doing is I cut me a square of this indoor outdoor. You gotta keep track of which way the lines go. The lines are going this way on this. I need to make sure that all the lines are going the same way or it's not gonna look right. And it goes just like that. And that would be one with the lines going that way. So the lines do go the long direction and the long direction is that way. So here is the board that will be going on top of that. Okay, I did go get my tripod, so hopefully that this will, this will, you'll be able to see this a little better. Um, hope I'm at the right angle. So basically what I'm going to do is draw a line from corner to corner on the back side of the fabric of the indoor-outdoor carpet. That gives you an idea of where you need to be. And then we make sure the lines are going the right way, the lines are going this way, that's the long way on the board, so that will sit like that. You set this corner to corner on the black line like so, and just to double check, it should be two inches. So that is two, that is two, two and two, and then we check the other way also. So that is a little less, and that is two and two. Okay, so we are sitting where we need to be so now the next thing I need to do is I need to split these corners because I'm not going to overlap my corners. So then I cut from the, from here, and that's what the black line's for. Cut on the black line from the corner of the board out to the corner of the fabric. Now I'm not a professional upholstery person. This is just the way I do it. And now you pull it nice and tight. tight all the way around 
and don't quite staple to the end because we've got to cut that off. But pull it tight so that there's, there's no buckling and leave it a little ways from the end like this. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. And then we pull this one, pull it really tight, staple to the end. Get the, as long as staples as you can get and really put them in hard. Make sure they're not just sort of in. If they're not in all the way, you can use a hammer to get them in farther. And now what you do is you go from this corner, you can feel it with your finger, and do about a 45. Cut like so. And you go from this corner, cut a 45, like that, and like that. Now what you want to do is you need to have a tab out here that you can roll over the corner so you can't see the wood. So cut this flat with the wood, like so, and you cut out a piece like that. And that leaves a little tab, is what that does. And so you go even and go out, and then down just a little bit so it's squared off. Same thing here, you do that same thing on all four corners, like so. Okay, now that all four of those are done, now you can snug it in nice and tight and then staple that corner. But make sure you pull it in tight because there's going to be a little bit of a buckle. But you can take the buckle out with the stapler right up to the edge. This would be this one right here. So as you can see, it's nice and tight all the way and it has this little tab on here. Okay, so now what you do with the little tab is you hold the tabs out. Now you could put the tabs in and go like so and then cut it and tuck it in there, but I'm leaving the tabs out. Start in the middle, pull it tight. Now it may not be absolutely perfect on the bottom, line for line, but meeting in the edges, but it doesn't matter for what I'm doing it for and don't go quite to the end. Just same way as the other side. You gotta leave a little bit of room I'm out of staples. So it does take a lot of staples. Make sure you have a lot of them around because I'm putting a staple in approximately every inch around every one of these and that adds up to a lot of staples. Once you get that done, you then pull it nice and tight. Go over here on the other side. And not quite to the end. Okay, now you have this with these tabs sticking out. So now what you want to do is you want to cut this right here so that this lays fairly decent in here and it doesn't overlap this piece of carpet. So you can kind of eyeball that, start at the corner, and cut it like so. And you do that on all four corners so that you meet the carpet on the joint, if it's not all the way to the joint, it doesn't matter because this is on the bottom side and you'll never see it. But that's what you want to do. That way you don't have overlapping carpet. If you have overlapping carpet, the doors don't close very well. Now all you have to do is take that out to the edge. You want to cut this out to the edge and then go straight down with the board to remove this piece. So you go out to the edge and when you get to the edge of the board, you go straight down. And it takes out a piece that looks like like that and you do that on all four corners to get rid of that flap that's sticking out there like that and take this one out and one more and then that's the edge of the board so you take it out like so and cut that off now what you need to do is there's a little bit of a buckle here, same way you did before. Snug that up there really good, starting from the corner in, and go ahead and staple it. And do that on all four corners, but make sure it's really tight. Like that. Now if I took a little more time, I could make sure all of these corners meet absolutely perfect. I don't really have to. And now what you want to do to make sure this never comes loose is I'm going to put three staples going the other direction on the corner. So one, two, three of them there. And you do that on all four corners. And now you have this little tab. So what you need to do is take this little tab and fold it over like that, as tight as you can get it, and 
staple it twice this way, twice the other way. That way you know for sure that it will not come loose. Pull it really tight and really push down with our stapler. And there we go. I got one here. And see, like I said, you could tuck this corner underneath if you wanted to. You could use a screwdriver, you could tuck it underneath, and it would clean it up a little bit. But even the way it's done here, you really can't even see it. But you could tuck that underneath and go like that and do it that way. I'm going on the outside because I want to make sure that I'm hitting it with the staple in the right place. But if you tuck it underneath, then it's real clean. But this is for the boat. It's not for, you know, something in the house or a chair or something like that. So make sure you leave enough tab when you cut it so you have something to attach to. So we have this one done. So there is the front of it. It turned out really nice. And there is the back and see the corner matches nice. And then this will be one of the lids. So I have some more of these lids to do and then we will um, add more to this when I put them on the boat. Okay, I have the hinges. I measured in two and a half inches from the edge to the middle. Make sure it's square. I have some new uh, Phillips head screws. These are actually a six by three quarters. Make sure they're not too long to go all the way through. You do not have to pre-drill these because this is plywood and it'll go through the fabric and the plywood. So all you have to do is get it started. Push really hard. Make sure you don't strip the screw and snug it down. I recommend doing one on one side and then doing one on the other. Make sure it's, it's together nice. This will be the other one. And then that squares it up. And then all you have to do is finish putting screws in these so that these are all screwed together. The other thing I need to do is I had this uh, cleat on here in order to tie off my anchor. So I'll measure from the other side, make sure it's in the same place. I believe it goes here. And then I also have this, which I'll put here and I'll measure to the center to make sure that I can close and I can put paddle locks and lock it. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I have this one done. Everything is, is attached to this one. I laid these the way they are going to be on the boat to make sure that they're perfectly even on the edges, like so. And then what I will do is I will put two, two hinges here, and then I will also put the other half of this, of this clevis here in order to close it. And so I'll get that done, and then one side will be done. I then do the other side, take them up, and I'm going to have to get some decent screws that go metal screws to go through this into the metal to, to anchor it down. So I'm going to keep working on this project. Okay, I have one of them done. This piece here will be, I have the hinges on here and here, and then this is the clevis that holds it, and I can put a padlock on here, and then two of them here, and then this is for the anchor. So basically this one on this side and this one on this side will be screwed down with metal screws and then these two here once you lift this up and open it then you will have access to the storage compartment so what I need to do now is I need to do two more and there's the old ones right down there and so I will get those two done and put them together and then I'll take all of them up and find I need to find some I think I, I would like to use the um, the hex head metal screws they go into metal because the frame is metal that goes into this and that would that would work very well so I'm gonna see if I can find some of those and get this other one done and then we'll add more to this thing I forgot to do is I need to have a hole here because there's a hose coming up a piece of tubing I believe it's for the sump pump on the um, on the boat so the bilge pump so I'm gonna cut a two inch by two inch piece out of here I'll have to take the fabric off move it back cut the wood and then cut the fabric and fold it over and make it look nice so I'm gonna do that now I pulled the staples so that the fabric can be folded out of the way and I think the best way to do this is with a jigsaw that has a wood cutting blade in it. So I will cut this and then start cutting the fabric and re-staple it back on. I had to pull all the staples through here so being really careful not to tear anything. Okay it took a little bit of doing but I did get this notch put out of here two inch by two inch and on the back side I just cut it and kept folding and stapling until it's, it's in there secure. So and since this is the bottom what you end up seeing is this part here which, which looks nice. So. Anyway, I'd say I need to put a couple more right in the edge here. So I'm going to do that, a couple more down here, and then we'll go put this on. Okay, the storage compartment covers are done. They turned out really nice. I like the gray. Um, everything worked out real well. I used these um, sheet metal screws, self-tapping. Measured them in and put those there, four here. Um, I'm four short. I only have two on that side and two on that side. I'll pick up some more. And then I have little padlocks that I can put on here. And when you open it up, 
there is your storage compartment. So that finishes this project. The next thing I'm going to do is I have to get some more of this gray and I'm going to replace this here with the gray because it is starting to show some wear.